a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ so we have covered uh, almost uh, every important subjects uh, in the bible and we have seen a uh, lot of things uh, from the scriptures uh, for almost uh, nearly around 10 to 11 months uh, since now so today we are going to study about a vision that is uh, mentioned to us in the book of zechariah chapter 4 so let us all open our bibles to zechariah chapter 4 you see we have uh, seen uh, several visions uh, in uh, other books uh, in the book of daniel so today we are going to see a vision that is mentioned in book of zechariah uh Joel brother can you read zechariah 4 chapter verse 1 2 and 3 and the angel that talk with me come again and walk walk me as a man that is walk uh, out of his sleep and said unto me what seest thou and i said i have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and is seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top there thereof and two olive trees by it one up, upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof very good brother so here dear brethren uh, we see that uh, zekeria is shown a special vision here you see in the vision zekeria sees uh, actually you see uh, a golden uh, you see a candlestick uh, you see and candlestick was made out of uh, gold uh, you see so zekeria uh, after seeing this uh, candlestick he also saw one important thing in that candlestick you see and what was that one if you see there was a bowl that was on the top of the candlestick you see so the angel that talked with him okay he waked him because zikri was sleeping and he said what see you zikri told i see a candlestick it was made up of gold Uh, and upon the candlestick uh, you see there was a golden bowl uh, it seems uh, you see you can see here see uh, and uh, this candlestick had seven lamps uh, you see and upon the candlestick which had seven lamps uh, there was a golden bowl and seven pipes uh, connecting uh, you see from the golden bowl to the seven lamps uh, you see <clears throat> therefore and also zekeria saw two trees one on the left side and other on the right side so two trees he saw two olive trees you see on the left and the right you see so uh, we also wonder what is the meaning of this one you see what is the meaning of this vision we are all curious to understand what is this meaning what is this golden pipe what is this uh, bowl Uh, what is this uh, candlestick wow what is this two olive trees next to this uh, candlestick they were similarly zekeria also wondered and question to the angel read verse 11 and 12 uh, joel brother read continue reading verse 11 and 12 brother then i then answer i and said unto him what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof and i answered again and said unto him what be these two olive branches with through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out out of themselves ah uh, so yeah you see uh zekeria was told that the two olive trees uh, they actually empty the golden oil from the two olive trees to the golden bowl 
and from the golden bowl you see actually the golden oil comes to the seven lamp stand okay so this is the, the explanation that is given uh, to the zakaria by the angel and uh, you still uh, zakaria could not understand the vision so hence zakaria questions what are these uh, you see read verse uh, 14 brother read verse 14 uh. What is the answer given by the angel? Huh? Then said he, These hmm. are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Ah, this is the answer that was given by the angel. These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Two anointed ones. So these two trees are two anointed ones from which the golden oil, you see, is actually poured uh, into the candlestick. Now, by this one, what can we understand? Two anointed ones of the Lord, you see. What can we understand? Uh, you see, similarly, Zachariah also did not understand. Okay. Now, today, we will try to decode this uh, vision. Okay. Now, where else do we read uh, about, uh, you see, the seven candlestick uh, you see, we have studied about this one in the tabernacle. Okay? You all remember the tabernacle class, no? So, we have studied. But, it is also given in the book of Revelation. Let us read Revelation 113. Uh, Sunita, sister, can you read Revelation 113, sister? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Ah, you see, the middle of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So Jesus here is shown as a high priest. You see, monitoring the seven golden candlestick. You see? And now what is the meaning of this one? You see, the explanation is given in Revelation, first chapter 28 verse itself. You see, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. If you have any doubts, any questions from the Bible, the answer has to be sought only from the Bible. So let us read Revelation 120, brother. Uh, Sunita, sir, please read verse 20 also. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Ah, very good stuff. See here, the explanation of the seven candlesticks is clearly given. Our Lord says... The seven candlesticks which those saw are the seven churches. Now, which are the seven churches? That means seven candlestick means seven churches. Now, which are the seven churches? You see, again it is given in book of Revelation itself. First chapter only. Read verse 11. There, the names of the seven churches are given. Uh, sister, read sister. Please read verse 11 also, sister. saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, hmm. and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Ah, see? Send it to the seven churches. Which are the seven churches in Asia? You see, Smyrna, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These are the seven churches. See, there were a lot of other churches, you see, in Asia. But uh, why this only particular seven churches are mentioned here? We said, if then... God could have mentioned something else, no? You see, the main church, the first church that was shattered in uh, Jerusalem is not there. Antioch is not there. Where the Christians were called uh, 
first time in the Bible, you see, these things are not mentioned, but you should have one very, very small churches, Pargama, Thetiria, Sardis, uh, you see, huh? all these things are mentioned. Why? You see, because it has got a spiritual meaning. You see, seven in the Bible, what does it mean? Seven always in the Bible means complete number. You see, that means these seven churches actually signify not the literal seven churches that was established uh, during those days, but it has got a larger picture. Now, what is the larger picture? You see, we all know that the gospel age, uh, that is the period where the church has been selected. You see, and this gospel age can be divided into seven equal parts. You see, and in each and every part of the gospel age, you see, a church is compared. Like, for example, the first part of the gospel age where the apostles were alive, you see, where they did a lot of uh, activities and ministry and expanded the church. That is compared to the church of Ephesus. That is the first church. Okay. And the last church, the Laodicean church, that is compared to the period of the Jesus second coming, the last church, dear brethren. So, the seven churches here signifies the seven periods of the gospel age. Okay. Now, angels means what? You see? Now, angels, seven angels to the seven churches. You see? It means what? You see? So, these are not the literal angels. You see? Uh, read uh, Revelation. First chapter, verse 20 again. Revelation 120. Again. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read? The mystery of the seven star which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven gold golden candlestick. The seven star are the angel of the seven churches. Very good. And the, you see, the seven huh, stars are the angels to the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. That means for each and every church, there is an angel that is sent. That means there is a messenger that is sent. See, here, angel doesn't mean the literal angel. You see, angel in the Bible always means for human agencies which God uses, you see, to proclaim his truth. Like for example, you know, we all know that John the Baptist prepared the way for our Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? He was the one who prepared his, his path and John the Baptist also mentions that I am not even worthy to, you see, lose his, you see, sandals. So, he was compared to an angel or a messenger. Does it mean that John the Baptist was a little angel? No. He was God's representative. He was God's messenger. Mark, first chapter, second verse. Mark, first chapter, second verse. Anil brother, can you read Mark 1 2? As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare. Thy way before thee. Very good. So I will send a messenger who will come before thee and prepare a place. You see, and this is speaking about whom? This is speaking about John the Baptist. Now, literally, an angel come from heaven. No, he was God's representative. So, similarly, seven angels in the book of Revelation also means seven God's representatives through whom. God proclaimed, you see, the truth uh, to the seven uh, different parts of the gospel age. Now, okay. Now, let us see actually what happened in the seven parts of the gospel age. See, we already studied a uh, major things about uh, Antichrist, our Jesus incoming, about the parable of the wheat and taste, of the three harvest and all those things. Now, let us analyze how these things are clearly synchronized in the seven parts of the gospel age. Okay, now read the first angel. Uh, the first church is the church of Ephesus. And that is given to us in book of Revelation, second chapter, verses uh, 1 to 6. 
Revelation second chapter verses one to six. Uh, Anil brother, can you read Revelation second chapter verses uh, one to six? One by one, we'll see and go. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things. Said he, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the mid midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and and thy labor and thy passions, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name, name's sake hast labored, and has not fainted. Yes. Never yes. What we see is the first part of the gospel age is a period where apostles worked very hard to establish the churches all over. You see, they were so zealous, so bold. You see, though they were persecuted by the Romans, the Jewish people and the Gentiles, they worked very hard. Therefore, it says, you see, Though as born and as patience for my name's sake, and though as labored and not fainted. I know thy works and thy patience. Therefore, it says that means initially when a church was to be established, a lot of witnessing activity went on. So the good, you see, work of sowing the seed went on very well. But slowly what happened? The church began to lose the first love. Read verse 4, Buddha. Anil Buddha, reverse 4. Nevertheless, I have so what against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Ah, Remember? See, here it says, I have something negative against you. And what is that one? Though you are good, your patience, work, labor, everything. But one problem is that, you see, thou hast left thy first love. Now, why did the church lose the first love? See, why? Because of false apostles. Uh, you see, verse 2, it says, no, which say they are apostles and, and, and have found them to be liars. That means in the first church itself, uh, Satan began to do all his activities. Uh, you see, slowly the false doctrines began to creep into the church. Uh, false apostles also came inside the church. Uh, so what happened? Many of the people's first love began to be. They began to calm down. You see, they lost the first zeal and interest. Uh, read verse uh, uh, 6. Who is also there in the church? Verse 6, Anil Buddha. But this thou hast, that thou ha hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, Dennis, which I also hate. Uh, but this, I uh, have one thing that uh, you, one good thing among you is that uh, you hate the Nicolaitans. Now, who are the Nicolaitans? You see, the Nicolaitans word uh, means in Greek, the one who lord over the church. See, this spirit God hated uh, and this one was also hated by the true faithful church who were living in that period. But then, this was the first period of Ephesus church. This was from 33 AD to 70 AD until the Romans destroyed the nation of Israel. Okay, this was the first church. Okay, now second church is the church of Spirna. This is from 70 AD to 313 AD. That is given to us in Revelation 2nd chapter 8 to 10. Uh, Romy sister or Amar brother, can you read Revelation 2nd chapter verses... Uh, Eight and nine. Okay, Revelation seven, second chapter. Now, verse eight and nine, brother. Nine. And on to the angel of the church is a. Uh, Srana, write what these things said 
the first and the last, which was dead, which was dead, and it alive. I know uh, thy works and tribulations and um, poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the uh, bless me of them which say the are Jews are and are not but are the uh, synagogue of Satan. Ah, it says, I know thy works, thy tribulation and poverty. That means during the second part of the church, the church was very poor. Poor in what? Poor in the spirit of the world. You see, the church during those days, they sold whatever they had and came in, handed it over to the apostles. And apostles equally distributed according to everybody's needs. So the church was very poor under poverty during that time. But what does the Bible say? It says, but though art rich, but yet uh, they were rich in faith. Uh, you see, uh, and uh, you know, there was a severe persecution during those days. Uh, the Romans persecuted the Christians. Uh, many were burnt alive. You see, the Diocletian emperor during this time had taken a oath that he would completely destroy the Christians. Therefore, you know, what does verse 10 say? Read with it, verse 10. Fear not of those things which thou uh, shalt suffer. Behold the behold, the devil shall cast some of you into a prison that ye uh, may be uh, tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Ah, you see, therefore it says, fear and love those things which those shall suffer because there was severe persecution and suffering for the church. It says, devil shall cast you some of you into prison and those shall have tribulation 10 days. Now, for a prophet, one day means one year. So, this 10 days is a period from 303 AD to 313 AD during the rule of Diocletian. He had decided to completely destroy all the Christians, kill all the Christians. And there was severe persecution. But what does the Bible say? You see, huh? though... You are supposed to die. Be thou faithful unto death. Uh, and I will give thee a crown of life. Dear brother, that was a severe time where a lot of test, uh, you see, was uh, for the true church. This is the second period. Okay. The third period uh, from, uh, you see, uh, the first advent of Jesus, uh, beginning of the gospel age, is Pergamos. And this is a period from 313 AD to 1157 AD. This is given to us in Revelation 2nd chapter 12 to 16. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Revelation 2nd uh, chapter verse 12 and 13? And to the angel of the church in uh, Pergamos Par write these things that uh, said he which hath the sharp sword with two edges, I know thy works and where thou shalt dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful um, Matra, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. You see, it says, where Satan dwelleth. You know, dear brethren, this is the elevation and the rise of the papacy system. We know about the Antichrist. It is during this period that Antichrist came to power and Pope ruled as the king and Pope was exalted. And the papacy became the seat of the devil. You see, 
So here it mentions uh, about a faithful Antipa, a martyr, that his name is Antipa. And who is this Antipa? Actually, Antipa means Antipa. Anti means against, Pa means Papa. So one who is against the Papa, Father Pope. Now who was against the Pope? These are the true faithful church. You see, they were uh, there still. There were some uh, faithful Christians who were there. And they were persecuted and killed, you see, in those period. But here, the speciality is that there is one special false prophet in the church. Now, who is he? Verse 14, sister. Romy, sister, verse 14. Yes. yes, brother. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast the stumbling block stumbling before block. Mm. before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit uh, fornication. Ah, that means, you know about the story about Balaam, it comes in Numbers 21st chapter, when you're free, please read it. There, Balaam was actually a prophet of God, but uh, he, for the greed of money, he made uh, God to curse uh, God's chosen people, Israel. And that one, how did he motivate? You know, he made Israel to sin against God by doing idol worship and committing fornication. That means this shows that how the Antichrist system crept into the church and gave them false doctrines and committed fornication by leaving Christ and going and joining with the emperors of this world. You see, therefore, you see, the Balaam, the false spirit, the false doctrines already crept into the church. So third period, what was there? You see, first and all, we see that Nicolaitans were hated. Antipas was there. But see, in the third church, it says, you see, uh, Nicolaitans uh, are there. But uh, their church is not hating the Nicolaitans, but are encouraging those false doctrines. Read verse 15, sister. So has... Thou also them that hold the doctrine of the um, Nicolaitanism, which things I hate. Ah, see, Nicolaitans' doctrines were hated by the Lord. But the church did not hate it. That is what our church is corrupted. The false doctrines have come into the church. So this is the third period from uh, 313 AD to 1517 AD. Okay, the fourth church is Thyatira. This is from 1157 AD to 1367 AD. That is given to us in Revelation 2nd chapter 18 to 23. Okay. Uh, Sister Sunita, can you read verse 19? Revelation 2.19, sister. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Ah, you see? What does it say? I know thy, huh? I know the works, charity, service, faith. You see, and thy works last to be, you see, more than the first. That means this was a time of the Antichrist. Antichrist was still full peak power, but still the faithful church were there. Now, who was in the church during that time? Sister, read verse 20. Huh? Uh, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet. 
practice to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat, th eat things sacrificed unto idols. Mm. Now who is there now? Earlier Bala was there, but here Jezebel is there. Who is this Jezebel? Uh, do you know the story of Jezebel? It, it is given in the book of Kings. Uh, you see, Elia was a prophet uh, and uh, Jezebel was actually a wife of King Ahab. Ahab actually reverenced, uh, you see, Elia the prophet. Uh, but Jezebel was against uh, Elia. She had her own false prophets. Uh, so, because of her sin, where she diverted all the Israel to worship Baal, Hence, uh, there was no rain for three and a half years. Uh, then, uh, upon the request of uh, Elia, there was a competition on Mount Carmel. You see, the false prophets and all, uh, they prayed to God to bring rain. I said, to consume the sacrifice and bring rain, but uh, nobody was able to do it. Uh, then, what happened? When Elia prayed, immediately the sacrifice was consumed. And everybody realized that uh, Israel God is the one true God. And all the false prophets were slaughtered. So here, similarly during the gospel age, when the Antichrist was on peak, the Jezebel represents the false church, so the Antichrist system. Ahab represents the kings of the European continent. You see, the kings and the emperors who joined hands with the church. You see, they both persecuted the true church. Because of which, there was three and a half years famine. Three and a half years means revelation of the period of Antichrist. We studied down 1260 days, 42 months, three and a half years. So there was no rain for a period of 1260 years uh, from 539 to 1799. That is what this, uh, you see, the rule of uh, Antichrist uh, represented by Thaichira Church. Okay. The fifth church is Sardes. Uh, this is from 1367 AD to 1517. Uh, this is a period before Reformation. This is given to us in Revelation 3rd chapter 1 to 4. Uh, George brother, can you read verse uh, 2? Revelation 3, 2. Hmm. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works prefer perfect before God. Hmm. Continue. Verse 3 also brother. Huh? Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, hear, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Uh, you see, Satan had worn out many of the faithful, you see. Brethren, but only a few were left. Uh, you see, the church, uh, you see, uh, had a form of godliness only outside. But inside, no real life was there, dear brethren. They had lost their first love, the zeal, the interest. Therefore, it tells, I know your works are not perfect in verse 2. And in verse 3, what is it God wants? He tells to remember his first love. How they received the truth and to hold fast their faith. So, dear brethren, this was a period before Reformation. Okay. The sixth church is Philadelphia. This is from 1517-18 to 1874. Revelation 3rd chapter 7 to 9. This is the period of Reformation. Uh, read verse 7 and 8. Anil Buddha, can you read verse 7 and 8, Buddha? Revelation 3rd chapter 7 and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, This thing said, He that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man openeth. I know why it works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Ah, here it mentions about uh, opening a door which God opens which no man can shut. And which God has shut which no man can open. Which is this door that was opened during the reformation. You know dear brethren 
it was the bible you see the printing of the bible the distribution of the bible the translation of the bible was opened uh, you see this was in the reformation and this came out like a huge flood and nobody could restrain nobody could close the door of bible translation none could stop it you know the brethren before you know when we were used to translate the bible they used to bring the bibles that was translated and the translator were burnt alive at the stake you see but now it was changed they were then god opened the door through martin luther you see the brethren so this uh, was a open door which uh, nobody could close uh, the reformation happened uh, all over the revolt happened a protest uh, uh, against uh, roman catholic happened and the protestants came out uh, this is how the protestant denominations was formed okay now let us come to the last church the seventh church that is the laodicea church that is from 1874 till the completion of the church revelation third chapter verse 14 to 20 uh, gopal brother can you read verse 15 how is the church during the you see seventh church this is the time of the parousia we all know very well this is the time of the harvest what we are living and how is the condition of the church today read with the verse 15 gopal brother you there yes brother okay and i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i would i would thou wert cold or hot you see how is the church church jesus says you are neither cold nor hot i desire that if you are cold or hot you see they are cold or hot means what they are not zealous in the truth they are not very strong in the truth also not standing for the truth also neither are they full worldly they are all neutral you see so what happened in the reformation all the reformers revolted against the roman catholic system and came out these were the protestants but later what happened these protestants also became the like the roman catholic they rejected all the doctrines two doctrines and held on to all the doctrines of the roman catholic system except idol worship so what happened similarly you see the reformers cooled off that is the reason says you are neither hot nor cold that means they are not even in the world and not even in the lord they are very intermediate very center people neutral people you see we can't catch them also you see so this is a very difficult situation and so what did our lord say next verse brother read brother ha huh? continue verse 16 so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth aha uh -huh. because you are neither hot nor cold i will spew you out of my mouth dear brethren so they were rejected the babylon was rejected dear brethren how jesus at this first advent tried to correct his nominal system during those period it was not corrected at the end uh, when he was supposed to be crucified he rejected the system similarly jesus from 1874 to 1878 he tried to correct this babylon but this false system the church system was never to be corrected hence uh, god rejected the system now how is the how is the church what is the fate of the church read verse 17 brother ha huh? because thou sawest i am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and mm -hmm. blind and naked see what is the condition of the church they are very rich increasing goods and have need of nothing go and see any churches all the churches are full jam packed full of christians but they come only for what benefit you see they give good offerings there are no problems at all you see they are you see very rich you see but spiritually how are they you see but spiritually they are blind you see they have big buildings big churches big channels big music system everything is a great crowd is there yes sir but is the lord in them no you see dear brethren therefore jesus says first of all you don't know your condition not able to realize your mistake you think that you are having everything 
But in the sight of Lord, what is the condition of the church? Got wretched, miserable, uh, you see, blind and naked, blind, they're not able to realize the mistake. Uh, and naked, uh, you see, they don't even know that they're not even justified before Christ. Uh. Dear brethren, you see, whenever uh, uh, in the book of Revelation we speak about seven churches, you know, in the fifth church, Jesus says, I will come like a thief. But in the seven churches, he says, I'll come quickly. But observe in the seven church, he says, I'm already at the door, knocking at the door. Read verse uh, 3, Revelation 3.3. 3. Uh, Anil Buddhar, can you read Revelation 3.3? 3, 3? Uh, Anil Buddha, you are there? Revelation 3 3. Can you read? Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Ah, I'll come like a thief, correct now? Fifth church is saying, come like that. Now read about the sixth church. It is given in verse 6, brother. Verse 6, brother. Huh. Uh, no, no, no. Verse 11, sorry. Read verse 11, brother. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Ah, you see? Behold, I come quickly. Now read about seven chairs. What does he say? Huh? Verse 20, brother. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm. If any man hear my voice and open mm. the door, I will mm. come to him, mm. come into him and will stop with him mm. and he with me. See? So Jesus at the door, knocking. That means he already returned. Many Christians think that uh, Jesus is coming soon, soon, soon. He has already come very soon. Then they expected. Dear brethren, so these are the seven, you see, periods of the gospel age. The seven compared to the seven churches. Okay. Now there, what did you see? That we saw that uh, oil, you see, oil came uh, from where? Huh? From the seven pipes. You see, now we have seen... That, uh, what is the seven lamps represents the seven lamps uh, represents the seven uh, you see uh, uh, angels to the seven churches uh, you see the seven churches we have seen so these are getting the oil from where they are getting the oil from the two olive trees from the two olive trees oil has been collected by the two golden pipes into the bowl from the bowl it is coming to the church now the candlesticks represents the church. Now, who is above the church? Who is head of the church? Who will tell me? Who is head of the church? Jesus. Very good. That is the meaning of the bowl. So Jesus is above the church. You see, he is the bowl. You see, the bowl is the source of the oil. You know, tell me, what is the meaning of uh, olive oil in the Bible? Oil represents Holy Spirit. You see, now, huh? Uh, Jesus uh, uh, has to give the Holy Spirit of understanding to the church. Okay. From where will Jesus get the Holy Spirit? Uh? It is from the two olive trees. Now what are these two olive trees? Let us read Revelation 11 chapter 3 and 4. Revelation 11 chapter 3 and 4. Sunita Aster, can you read Revelation 11 chapter 3 and 4? And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks in standing before the God of the earth. Mm. See, here the answer is given. What are the two candlesticks? He says, these are God's two witnesses. 
You see, these are God's two witnesses that prophesied in sackcloth for 1260 days. That is the period of Antichrist. Now, which are God's two witnesses that was completely covered in the Dark Ages? During the period of Antichrist, these two witnesses of God was completely hidden. You tell me, you heard the subject of Antichrist now? Now, which was hidden during the period of Antichrist? What was hidden? The two portions of God. Two things are there of God. Very, very important. This was totally not there in the Dark Ages during the period of Antichrist. Now, who can tell me? I'll give you a clue. You're all holding it in your hand today. It is there in your hand now. What is there in your hand now? Mobile, huh? Bible. Ah, Bible. Very good. Now, how many portions are there in the Bible? Two portions, brother. Very good. Old, Old Testament, New Testament. This was completely covered, means During the period of Antichrist, the Dark Ages, the Bible was hidden. Hence, it is called as Dark Ages. There was no light, no word of God. But yet, uh, God's words witnessed. Uh, that is the meaning of the Holy Trees, the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament. Okay. Now, should Jesus uh, receive the Holy Spirit from the Bible? Huh? Not that Jesus should receive the Holy Spirit from the Bible, but uh, if the church has to receive the understanding of the Bible, it is only through Jesus Christ. The oil comes from the olive tree to the bowl first, then to the seven lamps. That means the church, if they have to receive the understanding of the word of God, the Bible, it is only through Jesus. Therefore, you know, you might witness this truth to many people, dear brethren, but uh, many people don't understand. Why? Because they don't understand. Because Jesus has to open their eyes. Jesus has to open their ears. Then only they will be able to receive this one. Therefore, dear brethren, it is through, you see, Jesus that uh, oil comes. But in between there are seven pipes. Did you observe? You see, did you observe? Seven pipes. Aha, uh -huh. who are the seven pipes? These are the seven mediums, the seven channels through which uh, the Jesus gives the Holy Spirit of understanding of the word of God to the church. Now, who are the seven angels? Dear brethren, each and every church period, there was a special selected God's angel. God used them as his messenger or his angel to proclaim the truth. No, this is not literal angel, but these are all human agencies we are seeing. How John the Baptist, though he was a human being, is compared to angel in the Bible. So similarly, angel means the one who proclaims God's words, through whom God proclaims his words. Read Malachi. Uh, Gopal brother, read Malachi, second chapter. Malachi, second chapter, verse 7. For the priest, lips should keep knowledge and they shall, they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Mm, he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the angel. Dear Vitran, you see, so angels means human beings. Okay, who is the first angel whom God chose to proclaim his truth? You see, the first angel during the first church period was the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was the chosen vessel. We know that he was the chosen vessel for the Gentiles. When God called him to the truth, immediately God said, Come, I will show you how much things you need to suffer for my name's sake. So, the church of Ephesus itself was found and established by Apostle Paul. He wrote 14 letters. So more than 50% of the New Testament is written by Apostle Paul. He was the first apostle to explain the Old Testament, uh, how it uh, is the meaning of type and anti-type. You see, book of Hebrews, the tabernacle, the sacrifices, the covenants, everything in detail was explained by Apostle Paul. You see, dear brethren, so he suffered, uh, you see, very much. He tells about sufferings in Corinthians and all, you see, and he encouraged the many brethren uh, and he was a very hard-working person. He, he used to do a tailoring job, you see, 
began to weave tents and in the turning he used to you know, say do the Lord's work. So he suffered death during the period of Nero in 67 AD. Okay. So this is the first angel to the first church. The second angel to the second church is Apostle John. Apostle John was the last of the apostles to die. You know, he was one of the closest and the loving apostles uh, of Jesus. Uh, when Jesus was betrayed, you see, and who was supposed to be betrayed, Jesus told to nobody than only to John. So, God used John to write the book of Revelation and three books uh, in the New Testament. You see, and John was the one who gave much emphasis to Jesus is the son of God. Therefore, you can see the writings of John. Wherever he uses, he doesn't use the word God much. He uses father, father, father. Because he knew how Jesus was close to his father, father and son relationship. Therefore, he used the term father and he always mentioned Jesus as a son of God. You see, brethren, he wrote more about love. Because he was the loving apostle uh, of his our Lord. Therefore, he, he, he was isolated and uh, uh, island of uh, Patmos. It was like a war, you see, a mine. And uh, he suffered a lot. And from there only, he wrote the book of Revelation and uh, sent letters to all the churches. So ultimately, he finished his raid at the last. Okay, this is the second angel. The third angel is uh, uh, angel to the church of Pergamat, the th third period of the gospel age, he is Arius. Who is Arius? We studied about this one in the class of Trinity. Arius was the presbyter of Alexandria. He, uh, he actually was offered a position of a bishop. He rejected that one. So, Jesus was to be highly esteemed. That's what he believed. And uh, he was to be worshipped above the angels as son of God and not as God. So, he denied the, subject, the doctrine of, uh, you see, Trinity. It is during his period, there was a great debate uh, between Athanasius and Arius uh, regarding uh, uh, the doctrine of uh, Jesus is God or not. So, then there was a political instability. That is the time that a uh, council of Nicaea was called by the emperor in 325 AD and many people supported the creed of Athanasius though it was unscriptural and the king saw, emperor saw that uh, because uh, of now, because if he doesn't support Athanasius, the political stability will lose and there will be a lot of commotion and disturbance uh, in the Roman Empire. Therefore, he isolated, you see, areas into a man, you see, cannibal island where uh, man's flesh were eaten. But uh, in one year, he got Everybody converted to Christianity. Dear brethren, so what happened was that after one year, the king recalled him. By that time, you see, Arius actually died. So he was the third angel to the third church period. Okay, and the fourth angel is Peter Waldo. You see, Peter Waldo is a Angel to the Church of Thyatira, that means the third period of the fourth period of the Gospel Age. Peter Waldo was the first person to revolt and uh, to Pope and say that he is not God. Till then, everybody used to believe that Pope itself is God. He used to worship as God. You see, and he was the first person to translate uh, the Bible from Latin to French. He was a very rich merchant, he was a very, very rich person. He sold everything to translate the Bible. You see, and uh, he became a preacher and gave a lot of things to the poor, helped the poor. You know, what was the thing he did? Uh, you know, he uh, translated the Bible, you see, printed it of his own cost. The entire ship was completely filled with Bible and he was supposed to freely distributed. Immediately, the Pope came to know that Peter Waldo is sending Bibles. So, immediately, Pope purchased that ship, entire ship with the Bibles. He brought the ship to the seashore. You see, all the books were brought to the shore. The ship was broken. All the wood of the ship was brought. You see, it was, it was all built. And uh, you see, along with the Bible and the word, you see, Peter Waldo was tied in between and he was burned alive by the Pope. 
that is the time you know peter waldo prayed you know, what did he pray he prayed lord please open the eyes of the emperor you know lord heard his prayer you know in 1611 king james uh, king his eyes was opened and he was the one who translated the king james version which we actually use now therefore we prefer king james version you know that's the first bible that was translated clearly you know king james was a, a emperor but he had married a woman who was a sister of a pope and uh, she used to threaten uh, uh, the emperor every now and then have lot of uh, issues and quarrels with him so the emperor so 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 he could not control her then ultimately he decided to divorce her but the pope again was against it he pope opposed it then he could not control the pope at all and he could not speak against the pope also then emperor decided we should do something for this pope we should give him something then she saw what pope doesn't like pope doesn't like the bible and that is the time that he began to call the translators you see below his castle he translated the bible in english that is the time that is how the king james version came into picture therefore in the first page itself it is uh, written by the order of the majesty king james uh, translated in 1611 this is how we got the bible to be it's not so easy okay now the fifth church angel is john wycliffe you know john wycliffe is a morning star of reformation he translated uh, you see the bible uh, uh, into simple english he dis he you see discovered the bible is a soul is the basis of our faith and he accused the church of uh, mingling in politics you see and uh, he wrote more than 200 doctrines attacking the mass you see the lord supper you see we have taken the subject now you see shortly we will be having the lord supper god willing april 21st yearly once and he was the first person to clearly identify that pope is the antichrist you see the pope ordered that all the writings of john wycliffe be destroyed and pope hated him so much and after 43 years of his death his bones were taken and burned and ashes thrown into the river it seems to be there so this is uh, the fifth angel the sixth angel is a very important angel is martin luther martin luther is the fifth angel from period of 1572 1874 you know martin luther was a monk his father uh, was a farmer he struggled very hard and he wanted his son to become a good lawyer but unfortunately as the martin luther was studying uh, he could not uh, you see control is uh, uh, guiltiness uh, and uh, every now and then he used to feel that i am a sinner i am guilty uh, and he used to torture himself a lot and uh, ultimately he stopped all his studies and went to the monastery to become a father you see and he left everything and daily he used to fast and pray a very healthy man became so lean that he was uh, you see uh, only skinny then uh, in spite of all these things uh, he could not get uh, that the conviction that his sins were forgiven one went to rome walked upon the toes uh, touched all the relics uh, kissed everybody kissed the toe of the pope but even then he could not realize uh, that his sins were forgiven and that is the time he decided to end his life but before ending you know he decided to study the bible once and while he was studying uh, that is the time he got uh, a eh? verse what is that verse Romans one seventeen. Read, brother. Romans one seventeen. Joel, brother. Romans one seventeen. For therein is in the. righteous righteousness of god reveal from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith the state of the world ah just shall live by faith not by works that is the time his mind was opened just shall live by faith not by works 
not by giving offering, not by giving kisses to the relics, not by going to Rome, not by kneeling down, not by praying. No, by faith. You know, that is the time he began to study and uh, you see, he quoted 95 points against the Pope and nailed it to his church door on October 31st. Why October 31st? November 1st was All Saints Day. He knew all the Christians who were never came to the church will definitely come on November 1st. And as soon as they came, they began to read all the identified theses and revolt against the Roman Catholic system. Within one week, all the churches in Germany were destroyed. The Roman Catholic churches. Pope initially thought that Martin Luther was a fool. You see, he will come and kneel down before him and ask for forgiveness and beg for life. But nothing such happened. You know, Martin Luther Reformation went on so well that the whole world, there was a Protestants who revolted against the system. He questioned about indulgences. He questioned about immortal soul. He questioned about purgatory, hell. He told if Pope can forgive somebody's sin for money and send them from purgatory to heaven, why doesn't Pope do it freely? Of course, he clearly showed that Pope is Antichrist. He printed the Bible in the first page. You know what is there? He has written clearly that Pope is Antichrist. But now today it is not there at all. Why? Because they all got diluted. So, you know, this is how, you see, uh, Martin Luther revolted and ultimately Martin Luther, he was living uh, as a, in a monastery. He was a father, but he married and stayed in a monastery. He had a family in the monastery itself and seeing this one, all his friends, fellow brethren, they also began to marry. And, uh, you know, he demolished uh, because of his teachings only, uh, all the idols were demolished uh, in the churches in Germany. So he is the sixth angel. And let us come to the small last seventh angel, the period in which we were living. Very, very important. The angel whom God used to give the truth, which we are, you see, hearing and reading today. You know, dear brethren, it is our beloved brother, Charles Taze Russell. Charles Taze Russell actually was a brother, a beautiful and a wonderful brother, a faithful brother, was born in February 16, 1852 at Pittsburgh. You know, he was a very pious uh, child. Even at the age of four years, uh, he lost his mother. You know, but uh, actually, uh, his mother was so strict uh, with him that uh, he used to teach him uh, to be faithful to the Lord or else uh, God will put him to hell. Okay. So, uh, actually, uh, his mother did not die at the age of four, but uh, when he was in fourth standard. Okay. So, make that correction. So, Whenever he used to finish the school and come on the way to the home, he used to take a chuck piece of charcoal and write it on the wall. Please don't sin or else you'll go to hell, it seems. So, ultimately, uh, his mother passed away. Then uh, he had a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, this uh, hell torture, uh, fire hell. Why God would want to torture everybody? Then uh, he could not get a uh, uh, satisfactory answer. He even tried to convert many people to Christianity, but he was not able to answer the questions. So that is the time brother left Christianity and he decided to search other religion. He began to study all the religions. He, he studied all the religions. Then came to a conclusion that compared to all the religions, all the gods of other religion, our God is much better. So he came back to the Bible with an open mind, Without any, you see, prejudiced mind, he began to study the Bible. Then he began to realize slowly the doctrine of ransom, the doctrine of immortal soul, the doctrine of hell. Three world, what is the purpose of Jesus' second coming? You see, there is going to be restitution, resurrection of all the dead, dear brethren. You see, so one by one, he began to unlock the Bible, dear brethren. So, at the age of 22, he clearly understood what all teachings they are doing in the churches are false. So, he was a, you know, very, very rich person. You know, dear brother, he was actually a congregational church member. Till 15 years, he used to believe what all the false doctrines of the church are. You see, so, he was a, his father was a very rich merchant. He was very, very rich. Dear brother, you know, uh, the world's largest printing press was owned by American dollar printing machine. You know, 
that was the world's uh, largest printing machine apart from that one second largest printing machine you know who owned it it was owned by our brother russell you know he was so rich and he had so much of knowledge and uh, he wanted this uh, truth to go to everybody so what did he decide he called all the pastors in america to his home you see and made them stay there for one month paid them well took care of everything and taught all the teachings to them you know and in the end he concluded and told please go and teach this to all the christians in the churches you know what did the reply the pastors gave they told child eh huh? the still very young your father has got a lot of money and got a lot of good business why do you want to leave this business to us and take care of your father's business they told then brother asal decided oh if i leave them to teach the truth they would definitely not do it so in his uh, in front of him there were two decisions take his earthly father's business or take the heavenly father's business then that is the time he left everything and decided to follow the lord and do the lord's work dear brethren since then you see he began to proclaim the truth without taking one rupee offering dear brethren he never collected offering until somebody gave it voluntarily he, there was not a sermon where brother russell had spoken for offerings you see never did he you see you see collect offerings in the churches he believed that this is the lord's work and definitely the lord would provide him and similarly lord provided him dear brethren there were more than 220 ecclesias established all over the world you know brother russell's uh, you know very great wonderful work during those days in 18th century was a photodrama of creation during those times we know very well there was no color picture color movie and all you have seen charlie chaplin movie that was the only movie that was coming around but brother russell was the only one person who had a color you know you see a cinema like what we used to do in powerpoint that one in color but the russell was the only one who had it you know he exhibited to more than 9 million people dear brethren his sermons were published weekly in more than 4000 newspapers you know in 1879 he started the zion's vast tower and out of place presence the first volume the food for thinking christians was distributed more than 6 million copies he preached more than 30000 sermon the sermons were more than 3 hours dear brethren you know he used to conduct world tour he came to japan china india korea there is a place that is named in his name in india rasalpuram you know he came to india he went to all the other places sri lanka burma you see calcutta a lot of places you know he has traveled you know today when we travel to some other place to meet the brother and we usually book a train no or plane one 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 ticket we book and go no if you're going only individually or two three means two three people go but you know how brother russell used to book if he used to go for a tour the entire train would be his the train would be only for bible students and nobody else only the bible students will be there brother the entire train intercontinental express if he books a steamer or ship entire ship would be is all the brother and you see you see so much of uh, you say activity done he has written more than 39000 pages in a period of 37 years you know what is the average four pages per day what all we are teaching today it is not prepared by us the brethren lord has given us all these teachings to this through this wonderful brother was very very faithful dear brethren he was the first person to give nation of israel a beautiful hope he called all the jewish people in america in the epodra in the you see epodram you see he made a beautiful sermon for more than you know, many many people and you know say this is the intercontinental express i told you, you know, for the world tour na yeah? this is the epodram see the jewish people see brother russell standing in one corner huh a standing ovation was given he spoke for more than 3 hours dear brother about israel regathering of israel the blessings which god is going to give to israel he was the only christian preacher who never told the jewish people to convert 
you see the brand and his uh, you see subject were published in lot of newspapers the brand so he was the faithful and wise servant which the bible tells uh, you so you know by the time he died how much he had he was a very very rich person his uh, printing press was the world's second largest printing press but by the time he died he had got, he had got only few dollars in his uh, pocket so dear brethren this is how the bible students uh, association was formed but today you know after his death what happened uh, many people misused uh, his property you see and uh, they took over his uh, property and uh, went out uh, from the bible students uh, and formed the jehova witnesses so we are not jehova witnesses brother russell was nowhere uh, related to jehova witnesses because you can see in the screen the jehova witnesses was formed on july 1931 so why i am telling you this one because if you go and search on in internet you press you type charles taze russell immediately will come he is the founder of wastavers he is the founder of jehova witness but if you if you need to study the article there itself is clearly mentioned but the russell was never the founder of jehova witnesses after death of brother russell the jehova witnesses movement formed and it is because of judge rutherford who had manipulated all the property you see of brother russell and took it over and cast away all the bible students out from the trust so the bible students had to uh, you see disfellowship they have to separate from the jehovah witnesses and they were in the true doctrine but jehovah witnesses uh, you see they took over all the property of brother russell and uh, all the doctrines were changed to brother the many very very false doctrines uh, that one like for the is complaint uh, there is no heavenly salvation we need to run for the earthly salvation dear brethren so so many false doctrines uh, came into picture dear brethren why i am telling you this one because we are learning the truth uh, there should be nothing hide and seek dear brethren so we need to speak the truth uh. you see but the russell's name was spoiled by the devil because he knew very well that after his death a uh, lot of property if the truth will uh, wide spread uh. so satan used uh, the jehovah witnesses to spoil the truth dear brethren you know today many of the people have learned the truth uh, from us even the jehovah witnesses i'm telling you you see if you come to india i will show you so many brothers and sisters who are left that system and uh, come to the bible students because they have realized that there is no truth there dear brethren you see therefore dear brethren you see brother russell was the faithful and the wise servant the bible says uh, read matthew 5 chapter 11 and 12 <laughs> Matthew 5th chapter 11 and 12. Anil Badar, can you read? Matthew 5th chapter 11 and 12. So there, brother, Matthew 5th chapter 11 and 12. Okay, brother. Blesses are, blessed are you, ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you fa falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted die the prophets who is were before you. Uh -huh. See, if somebody speaks very good about us, we should be very careful. You see, God's children would never be spoken good, dear brethren. Everybody will speak you wrongly. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, not me. Because that's what they did uh, for the false prophets. The God's holy prophets were persecuted. Similarly, Satan began to spoil his name. Dear brethren, you know, Jesus tells, uh, uh, if somebody is speaking good about you, be very cautious. Read Luke 6.26, brother. Anil, brother. Luke 6.26. Luke 6.26. Way unto you, we all men shall speak well of you, for so 
did their fathers to the false prophets. Uh, see, if somebody speaks uh, good, uh, be very careful because that's what they speak to the false prophets. God's children would never be praised by the world. Uh, that's what they did to Brother Russell. Uh, you see, now read Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 45. Joel, brother, read Matthew 24, 45. See, the Bible actually speaks about Brother Russell also. We'll take all these subjects. A lot of prophecies of Brother Russell also. So many things are given in the Bible. But this is just a small, you see, a, a gist. Matthew 24, 45, brother. Huh? Who then is a faithful faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made ruler, ruler over his household to give him them meat in due season. Ah, who then is a faithful and wise servant? During his period, there were many people who were wise. There were many people who were faithful. But a combination of two, not many were there. You see, he was not only faithful, he was also the wise servant. You see, when Jesus returns, if anybody who is faithful and wise, what would the master do, it seems? The master would give him the authority of all his goods. Jesus is only goods. This is word of God. This is his property. He gave him the authority over all the Bible, all the secret things. So many doctrines, dear brethren. You see, so many subjects are there. It is all revealed through that angel to us. Dear brethren, you see, the lot of things, sir, you know, what subjects we have taken, it is just only 10%. I am telling you, whatever we have studied till today, it is only 10%. It is only the tip of the iceberg. A lot of doctrines are there. You should come and you come to my house, I will show you. See his writings, sir. So much of things are there. So many things which you don't know. Beautifully, Lord has written it to us through him. He is giving us meat in due season. Remember what did Jesus say? Behold, I stand at the hot door and knock. If anybody open, I will come and eat with him. You with me. So Jesus today is serving a strong meat. You tell me, see, the doctrines what you have learned till now. Is it really encouraging to you? Is it really, do you feel that it is really healthy food? Do you really feel that it is meat compared to the other teachings? Do you all feel it? Do you all feel the difference? Sir? Yes, brother. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes. Very good. That is the meat, dear brother. Why you want? Why you want to listen to this one? See, at this time we could all enjoy, see movies, eat food. Why we are sitting? We want meat. We want to grow strong in the Lord. That is what the Lord is providing us through this uh, angel. Dear brethren, they were, this is what mentioned in Zechariah 4 chapter. Lord bless these words. Okay, please go through the notes. I will send the notes. I will uh, share the recording also. Please go through it. Any doubts, any clarification, we will discuss next week. May Lord bless these words.